2022 imposes curfew on worrying communities in Yala local government area. Plus, Cross River Bedding Development Authority trains 150 youths for agri business. Details of these and more shortly. The news highlights. I am out in them. Now the news in details. The state governor, Senator Basio II, says government has impacted positively on infrastructural needs in parts of the state within the first 100 days in office. Governor II highlighted some of the infrastructure government has worked on to include upgrade and completion of the ultra-modern Calabar International Conventional Center, completion of 1.2 kilometer concrete paved in Young Edem Street in Calabar South, and rehabilitation, rehabilitation of 3 kilometer Beswasan Rural Access Road in Obudu, local government area, as well as rehabilitation of Eden Farm Access and Etan Ayib Road in Calabar Municipality. The bedrock of any economic and social development is availability of relevant infrastructural facilities. To this end, the state government has within 100 days in office has achieved the following milestones. Remodeling and renovation of the governor's office complex that is ongoing. Award of contract for the renovation and equipping of the state ultra-modern library complex, Calabar. Restoration and beautification of the Millennium Park Recreational Garden, Calabar. Meanwhile, the Cross River State Governor, Basio II, has imposed a dog to down curfew on the Ugaga and Ikpe Kureko communities in Yala local government area of the state. A statement by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Emmanuel Kweche, the curfew which is with immediate effect is to forestall further loss of lives and property and also to enable security agencies to deal decisively with, them, with the situation. This curfew is imposed by the governor following land boundary disputes, which resulted in security threats leading to wanton destruction of lives and property in Ugaga and Ipe Kureko communities of Yala local government area, as well as in Benekaba and Ujama, respectively. According to the statement, the governor has directed the State Emergency Management Agency to work out immediate interventions in terms of relief materials for the victims while urging traditional institutions in the affected communities to restore peace as they will be held accountable for further breakdown of law and order. Citizens are therefore advised to shield their sword and give peace a chance. And moving on, Encouraging and empowering Nigerian youth in agricultural production and agribusiness will address Nigeria's food insecurity being declared a state of emergency by the federal government. This was the submission of the stakeholders, including the Managing Director of Cross River Basin Development Authority, Basin Poson, at the graduation ceremony of 200 and 10 graduates of capacity building in agribusiness organized by the authority. Morillo Ajo reports. The declaration of emergency in food security in Nigeria by the president would have sent a signal to consent authorities to re-strategize to address the food insecurity challenge of the country. And the Cross River Basin Development Authority is leveraging on its components of integrated farming to provide solution to this challenge through the engagement of Nigerian youth in various agricultural value chains. To this end, a total of 210 youths have been trained in different agri-value chains, which include mushroom production, poultry, crop and vegetable production, greenhouse, fish farming, with value addition in food processing, fertilizer production, and irrigation technology, among others. Being a farmer does not stop you from being a medical doctor. In farming, the value chain allows you to be able to pick which sections 
Cross River State Government also believes in the strength of Nigerian youths to tackle the enormous food insecurity challenge in the country. The bulk of it is that part of the program will be that we will have a, what we call school farming project. We want to go to secondary schools, we want to go to universities to begin to mentor young people so that some of them will intentionally study agriculture and practice agriculture at the same time. By training all these students and be giving them hope, somebody said it reduces crime. I'm not saying it reduces crime, I'm saying it eradicates crime. The 210 graduates solicit support from government in mentorship, space and financial support to enable them continue with the knowledge gained. In Calabar, Maureen Leo Ajom, NTN News. In another development, the state government has criticized the contract abuses and poor handling of the ongoing construction of hospitals in the state. This is in view of what is seen at the now abandoned referral hospital in Ephraya Itun local government area of the state. In what is described as flagrant negation to building and contractual obligations, the state government frowns at the extent of work done, which is less than 30% and questioned. The project handlers decisions to leave the Ministry of Health out of supervision role it ought to play. That's it on our news highlights. Thank you for watching.